Hi folks, this is Kevin with Matt Practical. Just a quick video on uh, placing images and wrapping text in InDesign if you've never been in InDesign. Uh, so I have a template here. I'll open that up in InDesign. Uh, InDesign is the main publishing software pretty much for the whole world. Every magazine, uh, you know, any layout that you see is most likely put together in InDesign. All right, so here we have a three-page spread. Here's the Pages panel, and we've got the, the A panel and then the two-page spread. Um, <clears throat> you can see if I double click on that, it'll go right to that page. And of course, most of the same tools you use in Illustrator and Photoshop work. Um, this particular page has half inch margins all the way around. It's a three column spread and it has uh, some gutters here. And you can set that up when you first start an, an InDesign document um, or it's underneath the layout margins and columns and here it is. So half inch all the way around three columns with a one point uh, one two five gutter. All right. So today we're going to do a couple of things. First thing is going to put some text boxes in there. So uh, it's always about keeping organized in the layers. So let's go ahead and call this the uh, text. And I like to put a page number on things when I'm working in InDesign. Um, so there we go. We got a layer, and uh, we're going to put three text boxes in here. So get my little text tool with the T. And then I just click in the corner and drag down, and it should snap right into these guides. Now, these guides, you won't see those when you uh, do your final export. And then I'm going to make another one here in the center. And a third one over here. All right, so now I have three text boxes. And if I look in the layers, you'll see them. There's the free text, uh, three text frames. I'm going to get the one, the first column going, and then I'm going to do type and then fill with placeholder text and see it just fills the one text column um, what we want though is the text to flow amongst all the columns so I'll go ahead control Z out of that and then just get my selection tools here and then with this first one selected if you go down to the bottom right hand corner there's this little square if I click on it then it allows me to link it to the next one so just clicking on that gives me the little arrow to the right I click on the next text box and it added it to this one and then I'll go and click on the little box on the lower right again and then click it into this text box there we go it looks like I overshot a little bit so I'm gonna get my uh, V tool and just get that to snap up to the guide there we go alright so now T for text tool get the blinking cursor in my first text frame and then I'm gonna try that again with type fill with placeholder text and see now it's, it's gone ahead and wrapped around through all three of them. Now this is just a kind of a googly gawk a Latin, just as a placeholder. It doesn't actually mean anything, or maybe if you speak Latin, you'll figure out that it does say something. But as far as I know, it's just random words in Latin. All right, so there's our first uh, bit of instruction. Now let's place an image here. So I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to call this one my globe and that's also going to be page one uh, there we go and lock my text box selected uh, globe layer and then I'm gonna go up to file and place and I'm gonna to navigate to a pre-made PNG and the reason I'm using a PNG is because I've been able to erase the outside pixels around my little globe here and you'll see when it comes in that it won't show those so I will just say open that one and then it gives me this option so if I click just once, it will place the image in its, uh, in its full size. If I click and drag, I can create a picture frame and it will fill the picture frame. So I'll just show you what I mean. I'll just click once. So there's the image in its full size. Now, I can grab that and drag it out and make a bigger frame out of it. But you'll notice that the image didn't change size. Inside of InDesign, when you place an image, it has like a holder, so which is an image frame, and then the image within it. Um, now, under the auto fit, I can uh, tell it right here to fit content to frame, and it will jump out just like that. Or I could have fit the frame to content, whatever the case may be. I actually will make that a little bit smaller. And I should hold down shift so this frame stays proportional. And then I'll fit content to frame. If, if you don't have these toolbars in your menu up here, and that really depends on which one of the... Um, the different workspaces you're using. Uh, you can also find that under the properties. Oops, so if I go to window, properties, then these frame fitting tools are right there. So fit content to frame. There we go, and close that guy. 
Um, and then I'm going to zoom in. And what you might notice, though, is that it looks a little blurry. And that's just the preview. So if we go to View, and uh, we tell it to Display Performance High Quality, there we go. So now we've got our nice high quality. Now what we want to do is wrap the text around this globe. Um, the text wrap always goes around images. It isn't applied to the actual text columns. So with the globe selected like that, we're going to go down here to the text wrap toolbar or tool panel. If you don't have it, then you can find it under window. And uh, I'm going to tell it to use this wrap around object shape. Okay. Now it just went to the outside of the frame at this point, but if we go down to the contour options, or the wrap to, excuse me, and no, nope, it was, it was the contour options, and tell it to detect edges. There's the bounding box is the frame, detect edges should be good, alpha channels if you have those set up, but detect edges works pretty good. Okay, so now it's wrapped around, but it's a little bit too close, and this little guy right here is the one that will give us a little offset. So there's the type offset. Um, now we have a couple of things going on though. So there's a, a couple leftover words and even some letters left over here. And that's all about just fitting this, um, this detected edge uh, to, to work with our words better. So I'm going to get my direct selection tool. And you'll see that I can actually zoom in pretty close and get a hold of these little nodes here. And I'm going to hold down shift so I can select all four of these ones. And then I'm just going to slowly move those up with the arrow keys until I can get my words to not be uh, cut off. And then this one over in this corner, one way I could do that one is just to grab, oh, if it'll let me, there we go, until I can bring this down and get that. Okay, so now if I zoom out, you'll notice that I've taken care of the ones down on the bottom. And what about these guys? Well, there's a number of ways I could go, but probably the easiest thing to do would be just to get uh, my text box unlocked and then my T tool, and then I'll just hit a tab and, and get that out of there. Oh, but I ended up with a problem. So back to my original um, solution. Let's select this one again, and it looks like if I work on these toggles, I should be able to get those words to go over. There we go. All right. So there's my first page. Not looking too bad. Um, if you ever want to see what it'll look like without the guides, you can simply go to View and then under, oops, excuse me, View and then uh, Screen Mode Preview, and that takes away all the guides. So View back to Screen Mode Normal. Um, and now we want to add a couple more images. So there's the globe. I'm going to go ahead and add another layer. And this one's going to be called Picks. Page one, and say OK. And I'm going to add a couple more pictures in here. So uh, let's go to File, and then Place. And I'll grab this penguin picture. And it's going to go at the bottom down here. Now, if I click once, you'll see it gives me the full size of the image of the penguin. That's in its full resolution. I'm going to Control Z, and I'm going to click and drag between these two. There we go. And now the, uh, the penguin is inside that image, or inside that frame. Uh, I could say fit content to frame, but it already should be. And then I'd like to get this frame all the way down to the bottom of the, there we go. And now we'll go over to the word wrap, and we're just going to use the second one, wrap around the bounding box, and there we have it. Now, you can make the, uh, the gap around it more by, by clicking on these guys. See how it gives me even more space, but actually its default was pretty good and we can live with that one right there. All right, I'm gonna do one more pick. Uh, so file, place, and we're gonna grab the ice picture and we'll put that one up in this corner. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna go down to the wrap around right here, wrap around the bounding box, and there we go. So this one might need a little bit of extra space. See it's how it's a little close? Well, you can take a look. They've got both left, right, top, and bottom. So on the bottom one, I'm going to go ahead, oops, I went negative, I want to give it a little bit more. So that's actually not too bad. Something about like that. Okay, um, one thing to notice though is as we placed all these images, it ran the text right off the page, and that's what this little plus symbol means down here. We'll get back to the text layer, and that little plus right there at the end means that there's um, uh, offset text. It's gone off the page. Now, 
In order to see what you're missing and maybe make edits to your text, the easiest thing to do, instead of just deleting whole paragraphs, is just change the text font size. So if I get my T tool and I select the first couple of letters here, I can hit Control A and it just selected all of my text and then underneath my characters I can go down with the point size. So there we go, I went from 12 to 10 and now I can see everything. And now you can make edits to this and get it to so it flows just to the very end of the page. Okay? All right. Uh, lock off my text. And next thing we're going to do is make another layer and put that below. Oops. And I'm going to call this map page two. And we're going to go over to page two. So there we go. Uh, in this particular case, we're very close to being done with this little mini atlas layout. So I'm going to insert a map, and it's already been styled for this exact size, 8.5 by 11, in a landscape format. So I'll do File, and Place, and first one's going to be Antarctica in Physical, and we'll click right in the very corner of this page, and there we go. And Antarctica Physical is right there. That's simple. We can lock that one. We can move on over to page 3, make another layer, uh, Map. Page three, and we'll do a file place, and this one is going to be the political map of Antarctica. Not a whole lot going on except for some scientific bases down there. So there we go, and uh, I will go ahead and just line these up as far as their order. So now we've got it, and let me zoom back out. So there's our three-page layout. We've got our initial page with a place locator globe, a couple of pictures, all wrapping in a three column layout, and then down here uh, we've got our Antarctica political map and an Antarctica physical uh, geography map. And um, that's pretty much it. If we took a look at the view and screen mode preview, that's what it would look like. And of course it's always a good idea to save your uh, InDesign documents. Um, and then when you're ready to export this out to a PDF, you just go to File, Export, and then Adobe PDF should be the default. And we can just go ahead and save that. It comes up with a bunch of menus. Uh, probably the most important one is if you've got nice maps, you want to make sure that the compression isn't too low. 300 dpi is what my original maps were uh, designed as back in Illustrator. And I just placed those TIFFs, but I could have placed Illustrator files as well. Uh, but we just want to make sure that these uh, numbers aren't too low. The defaults look good here. We'll say export. It'll probably be working on it really quick. And then if I go, uh, let's see, yep, it's done. And then if I go over to the actual folder again, we should have a PDF. And I'll bring that over. And there we go. So there's page one, page two, and page three of our little layout. So that's the basics of InDesign for this particular assignment. I uh, hope that helps everybody out. If you have any questions or uh, comments, please leave them below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.